Thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm Mr. Phelps. I'm the IB Diploma Program Coordinator here at Bonita Vista High School. And uh, the, the video that you're watching or that you've started watching um, is a presentation that I give to 10th grade students um, about our IB program. Um, so in this presentation, I'm going to sort of cover four things. Um, one, who am I? Who's presenting? Two, what is the IB? Uh, three, what IB courses can you take at Bonita? And four, what does it mean to be an IB Diploma candidate? Um, so the, the goal of this presentation is to sort of give a lot of general information and then for, for students and families that are interested, um, I'm happy to set up one-on-one -on -one appointments or small group appointments um, to sort of talk about what, what it would look like for, for you or for your child to participate in our IB program. Um, so without further ado, uh, who am I? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm Mr. Phelps. Uh, my name's Jared Phelps. Um, I graduated from Benitez to High in 1997, um, and I earned my IB diploma when I was a student here. Um, I went up to UC Berkeley and I studied math, <clears throat> uh, graduated from there, came back down to San Diego, got my teaching credential and my master's degree at Point Loma Nazarene. Uh, I taught at Hilltop for 15 years and then got a chance to come back to my alma mater, back to Bonita. Um, and I've been here teaching math and coordinating our IB program at Bonita since 2007. Um, so I have a lot of history with the IB. Um, I've got a chance, gotten a chance to sort of see it grow over time. Um, and every year I'm more and more excited about the opportunities that we have for our students um, and that I'm excited to be able to share with you. Um, so what do I do at Bonita? So it's technically my job title is that I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher on special assignment. Um, in practice, I'm a teacher who teaches IB math, so I, I tend to teach one IB math class every year. Um, I sort of function as a counselor in terms of helping IB students with their schedules. Um, I also function as a counselor for our IB students in terms of general student issues. Um, if they're having you know conflicts with other students or challenges at home or anything like that, um, I'm a person that they can come and talk to. Um, I'm also a program coordinator who makes decisions about our IB program. Um, I sort of supervise the other IB teachers and make sure they have the supports that they need. Um, and in general, I just think of myself as a problem solver. Um, I like to try and find ways to make things better, um, to make our IB program better. And so I'm always looking for ways to do that and improve that. So that's who I am. Um, you know, beyond that, like, let's talk about our IB program. Um, so the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program um, is, is a phenomenal program, and, and it's, it's something of a rare program. Um, there are only eight, maybe nine schools in all of San Diego County that offer the IB Diploma Program. There's only two schools in our district that do the IB Diploma Program. Um, across the entire state of California, there's about 300 schools that offer all of the IB programs. <clears throat> um, and so the IB program is absolutely something that, that sets you or sets your child apart from other students. Um, I believe that it has a lot more to offer students than AP programs, than honestly any other academic or holistic program at any school. Um, admittedly, I'm biased. I love our IB program, but I hope to get a chance to share with you today why I think it's so amazing. Um, two things that I want to share on this slide before I, before I go on. One, um, kind of in the bottom left here, we've got like a little snippet of the, of the IB mission statement. Uh, part of the IB's mission statement is to develop inquiring, knowledgeable, and caring young people who help to create a better and more peaceful world through intercultural understanding and respect. I really like that the IB program's mission is not about college credit. It's not about like doing great in high school. It's not about showing off. Um, you know, it, it's about encouraging our kids to be well-rounded people who understand the complexity of the world. Um, the bonus is you do get college credit. You get a lot of other things that you would get from an AP program, but you get a lot more than that. Um, on the right, you see these 10 attributes. This is called the IB Learner Profile. So as IB learners, um, and as IB teachers and IB staff, um, we aim to be balanced, caring, communicators, inquirers, knowledgeable, open-minded, principled, reflective, risk-takers, and thinkers. Um, we're really trying to encourage students to be the best people that they can, in addition to being great students. Um, so like in a nutshell, philosophically, that's, that's what the IB Diploma Program is. Um, why should students take IB courses? Um, and I, I should be clear, um, we have lots of classes on our campus that are IB classes. And then there's a thing called the IB Diploma Program. And I'll talk about that at the end. So I'm gonna sort of talk about IB in little bits and pieces, and then we'll talk about what it means to participate in the entire IB Diploma Program. Um, so why should students take IB courses? Um, at the core of every course is reflection. Um, there's a real focus on your learning. It's not just about preparing for a test. Um, it's, it's a lot about thinking about how to think um, and how to be a, a person who's trying to get the most out of their education that they can. Um, IB courses are challenging. Um, I don't know that they're really any more challenging than AP courses, um, but you're challenged to do more than just think academically. You're growing physically, you're growing mentally, um, you know, you're, you're sort of growing in terms of your ability to think in these subjects and not just perform on exams. Um, you know, if, if you take this program seriously, you, you really, really do grow and, and you become, um, I don't know, for lack of a better phrase, a better person.
Um, every class, every part of the program offers students some opportunity to choose what they're doing. So, you know, for as much as daily assignments and things might sort of be, you know, fairly normal things, every part of every one, if, if, every one of these classes has some part of it where students are choosing, hey, this is the part of history I want to look at. Hey, this is the part of math that I want to look at. You know, this is the science experiment that I want to do. Students are getting a lot of agency and, and ability to choose what they want to do. Um, and that's something we don't always see in, in, in high school education. Um, this is a big one. I don't like to make a lot of noise about it, but the more that I see this data, the more I have to mention it. Studies have shown that students that participate in an IB program are more likely to be successful in their college studies. Um, it, it, like they're more likely to, to graduate, they're more likely to be admitted. Um, universities know this. They know the kind of student that they're getting when they accept an IB student. Um, and so like, I, I, don't, I don't like to talk a whole lot about like the AP versus IB decision, but the reality is there is research that does show that students are more likely to be admitted to colleges, that they're more likely to be successful in those colleges if they've had access to IB courses. Um, you know, even above, um, you know, uh, even above AP courses or their honors level work. Um, the final bullet point that I put here, and I put it last because it's, it, in my mind, it's the least important. Um, similar to AP, you can earn university credit for the work that you do in high school. Um, IB classes and IB exams do get you college credit um, sometimes, in the same way that AP courses sometimes get you college credit. Um, I mentioned that last because I, I think that it's easy for us to focus too much on college credit. We think that we need to get as much college credit as we can, when the reality is colleges are giving less and less college credit. They're, they're less and less inclined to accept the work that students have done in high school as equivalent to what they're going to be doing in college. Um, so I sort of mentioned this as a final point here um, in terms of why you should take IB courses. You do get university credit, but I really think we need to see that as the icing on the cake and not as like the main thing. If all you're going for is college credit, I think you're missing a lot of the picture um, of what it means to be successful in high school and be prepared for college, not just have credits for college already. Um, so then there, you know, when I give this presentation in, in classes, students will often ask like, hey, does IB really look better? And, and the short answer is yeah. Um, there was a research study that was done of over 4,000 students. Um, and among those, that sample of 4,000 students, IB students were on average 22% more likely to be accepted to the top 25 top colleges. Um, from that list of 25 colleges, I chose like the five that I... I hear students talking about very often, so I didn't like cherry pick the ones that had the best statistics, um, but sort of pick the ones that I hear students looking at a lot. Um, so for Stanford University, the, the general acceptance rate was 4.65% and the acceptance rate for IB diploma candidates was 17%. Um, for Johns Hopkins, a very, very well-known like pre-med university, the general acceptance rate was 6% and the acceptance rate for IB diploma candidates was 46%. Uh, we can see for UC Berkeley, for UCLA, for UCSD, students are much more likely to be accepted to these universities um, if they are IB diploma candidates as opposed to not IB diploma candidates. Um, to be clear, you know, the, the statistics are talking about students who are full IB diploma candidates, which I'll talk about at the end of the presentation. But even like this data to me shows that colleges value IB coursework above AP coursework. Um, and I say that because, like, you know, when you think about students that are applying to Stanford, to Johns Hopkins, to UC Berkeley, to UCLA, you generally don't have students applying to those schools who haven't taken lots of AP exams. You don't have, you know, sort of just like anybody applying to those schools. It's, they're very, very competitive schools. Um, and so the fact that the acceptance rates are so much higher indicates to me that, that, I, that universities do see IB. They do see the value of that, and students are more likely to be um, accepted. And so I, I feel like I have to do my due diligence in communicating to students and to parents that IB does make a difference. It, it is seen by the colleges. Um, and so it's the reason that I, in addition to my love for IB, um, from a practical standpoint, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of benefit um, to taking these court classes and, and to looking at this program. Um, the next couple slides I have are sort of like, how is IB better than ever? What, like, what is it about the design? What is it about the implementation that makes it, that makes it kind of better? Um, and then I'll, I'll get on to where we sort of talk about the nuts and bolts of courses. So I'm still kind of talking about the structure of the program. 
Um, so by design, um, I really love that the IB exams um, are split across multiple days. Um, so if you or your child have ever taken an AP exam, AP exams are always administered in one day. Um, and so students will go to the gym or to the cafeteria to wherever they're going to be, um, and they'll sit down for, for four hours or five hours and, and do that one exam on that one day. Um, and their entire college credit thing, their entire score comes down to that one day. Um, I, I enjoy that, I appreciate that the IB exams are split across multiple days. You know, sure, the exams are still four hours long, but you're looking at doing like two hours one day and one hour the next day, or an hour and a half one day and an hour and a half the next day. Um, they, IB recognizes that test fatigue is a real thing, and so they split those exams up. Um, in addition to that, in every IB subject, anywhere between 20 and 50% of your final like exam score, the college credit score, that comes from work that's done in class or at home. Um, the courses all have what are called internal assessments or authentic assessments um, that aren't just multiple choice tests in a test setting. Students are writing a paper, they're making a presentation, they are you know, speaking the Spanish language like in an organic, authentic way with their teacher, not just recording into a, into a recording device. Um, so, like when we think about the way that IB does their exams, they're split up into smaller pieces so ex students aren't getting as much test fatigue. Um, in addition to that, students are able to, to do revisions on some of their work um, that they're submitting earlier and that also counts toward that thing. So sort of like IB has multiple measures of assessing how well a student knows something as opposed to just relying on one test. Um, the exams also have varying difficulty. Um, there's terms in the IB called SL and HL. SL stands for standard level, HL stands for higher level. Um, and so you can sort of choose, like if there's a subject you're not quite as good at, you can do a standard level exam in that instead of a higher level exam. Um, to be open and honest, the higher level exams are more likely to get you college credit, you're less likely to get college credit from the standard level exams, but both of them are weighted grades. Both of them like lead to higher GPAs. Um, both of them are seen as as, um, as IB courses by the universities in terms of um, you know, like admissions percentages and things like that. Uh, Everything that I mentioned up above goes for every single one of our IB classes individually. Um, if you or your child are interested in pursuing the full IB diploma, there's even more benefits. Um, there's a part of it called CAS um, that stands for Creativity, Activity, and Service. That ensures that you have a good balance of extracurriculars. Um, students also write an extended essay in the diploma program um, if they are full diploma candidates. Um, they get a rare opportunity to write a research paper in high school. Um, that's not easy, but it's really, really great that students get a chance to do that before getting to college, uh, get a chance to do that in a, you know, a, a less time pressured space, um, you know, to, to be able to get that first exposure to research writing. Um, th this next slide is sort of about how do we implement IB at Benita to make it, you know, better than ever for students. Um, so for one, IB and courses are intended to be done over two years so that students have more time to develop knowledge before showing it on those culminating exams for college credit. Um, and we, we do that as often as we can here at Bonita. Um, our IB English program is two years. Our IB History of the Americas program is two years. Our dance and theater and chemistry, um, the language programs, like almost all of our, of our subjects are set up to be two years of time for students to develop that depth and breadth of knowledge so that they can show it on these IB exams. Um, in addition to that, the major deadlines in these courses are scheduled in advance. Um, as a coordinator, I coordinate with other teachers to try and make sure that we don't wind up with like multiple big projects that are due on the same day. We really try and keep student mental health at the front of our minds. Um, that's hard to do. Um, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, high school is a challenging place here, um, but in our IB program, we really try to do what we can to mitigate that stress um, and to support students as as they're going through this really challenging thing. Um, finally, this is kind of a silly one, but it, it makes a big difference to students. You kind of wind up with a second unofficial counselor. Hi, it's me. Um, I, I can't actually change your schedule, but I, I sort of work as, a, as another person on campus that students can talk to in terms of getting support, whether that's you know class changes or whether that's just getting moral support um, and, and counseling. Um, and, and that's a service that I'm happy to provide. Um, students that have chosen to take on the challenge of doing IB work, um, I think deserve that support um, and I'm happy to be able to provide it. So I, I finished the second part of my presentation, right? The first part was who am I? Uh, the second part is what is IB? So I got a chance to kind of share with you what 
IB philosophically is, like what, what it's about. <clears throat> um, so then the next question becomes, all right, okay, fine. So, so maybe we're in on that. If you're still watching, then you know, I, I assume that you've, you sort of follow what the IB program is about and what we're trying to do. And now we want to know, like, hey, so what, what IB subjects do we have here? What can students take? Um, IB splits all of their subject, their courses, into different groups. So the first group is called Language and Literature. Um, and the course that we offer there is English um, language, it says English Lit, but we've actually just changed it in, in this past year to English Language and Literature HL. Um, we only offer this at the higher level. We don't offer it at standard level because the success rate is so high on it. Um, but it's a course where we study both um, components of the English language and rhetoric in addition to English literature. Um, and when we study English literature, we don't study just you know, old pieces of literature. Um, you know, we look at a wide variety of texts from a, a diverse range of authors and perspectives. Um, I, I think we find that while students might not love every single book we study, it's like every student finds at least one book, usually several books, that they're really, really into. Um, our, our, our English teachers really do a great job of, of, of trying to do that. Um, in the languages, um, in French, you can study either higher level or standard level or something called Abenicio, where you only do two levels, two years of the language, French 1, 2, and French 3, 4, and then take an exam. You can also do Spanish at higher level or standard level and Italian at standard level. Um, in the individuals and societies, we offer the history of the Americas, which is a higher level. Uh, we also offer history as a standard level exam. Sorry, it doesn't say that on there. Uh, we also have economics as a standard level. And then finally, we have an interdisciplinary course called environmental systems and societies. Um, and what it means that it's um, environ what it means that it's interdisciplinary um, is that students can essentially get exposure to both social studies and science in the same class. And I'll talk about that a little bit later, but I'm just kind of listing the courses here. Um, we've had a little bit of shift in our sciences. Biology, higher level, it seems like we're not going to be offering anymore. We might still be able to offer biology standard level, um, but I know for sure that chemistry, higher level, chemistry, standard level, and environmental systems and society, standard level, are going to continue to be science options. Um, we're in the process of looking at trying to offer computer science, so we won't have that next year, but I think there's a good chance that for the 2025, 20, 2026 20, school year, we'll probably have a computer science option. Um, in, in math, we actually have a couple of different pathways. There's one math pathway called math analysis and approaches, um, that's higher level and standard level, and there's another called mathematical interpretation and application, um, which is offered at both standard level and at higher level. And I'll, I'll give more details about these later. Um, as far as the elective or the arts is concerned, um, we offer dance higher level and standard level, music standard level, and then theater higher level and standard level. We're in the process of working on adding film, um, but it's not super set in stone yet, so I don't have that here on the slide. So this is kind of our overview of what the IB subjects are that we have at Bonita. Um, and so now I'm going to sort of go into each one of these and talk in a little bit more detail about each of them. So if there's one you're looking forward to or want to hear more about, feel free to kind of fast forward to that section, uh, but we'll keep going. So in the language and literature section, <clears throat> um, remember that in the IB, all of our courses are intended to be a two-year sequence. So what happens is in 11th grade, you would take the course English IB HL1, and that course name means you're doing English, it means you're doing an IB course, it means it's a higher level course, and it means that you're doing part one of two of that course. Um, so my assumption is that you're a 10th grader right now, or, or you know, you're, you're looking at your schedule for 11th grade. Um, so in 11th grade, what you would be taking is English IB HL1. What's the best part of the class? Students say that studying newer books is a great part of the class. Um, we read a graphic novel in the class. We read some works in translation. Um, you know, we, we read a collection of poems. Um, I, I know that there was, a, there was a time even now where we, we study the works of Bob Dylan and Kendrick Lamar um, as pieces of literature um, and, and really use that as a way to dig into what it means to study literature and to study language. Um, why should you take the class? Um, while there are some writing requirements in the class, the class is really about thinking and discussing and understanding literature and language in the way that we do it. So it's not, this class is not about like constantly writing essays. Um, it's really about reading and processing and understanding what it is that you're reading. Um, what do students say? Um, I mentioned it earlier. That students say there's a book for everybody. Um, you might not love every book, um, but everybody finds some of the books that they really, really connect with. Um, and one of the cool parts, remember I, I mentioned earlier that in IV students have to do like projects where they like get to choose the thing they're going to do. For, for most of the IV work, students get to choose what books they want 
to, to write about or to present about for their IB assessment. So if there's a book they really didn't get into, great. They can do that. I mean, not great, but they, they can do that book for class. They can say, hey, you know, I, that book really did not fit with me. I'm not going to use that one for my assessment. I'm not going to write about that. I'm not going to present about that one. I'm going to focus on a different one. Um, and, and I think that that flexibility really, really helps students to find, find a way to be successful in this class. Um, moving on to the next language area, um, acquired language. <clears throat> there are a lot of course pathways here, and, and I don't want to like go into great detail on all of them, but I, I want to sort of highlight a little bit of something here. I'm going to show the Spanish one as a way of example. The way that we should really think about it is that the SL level of a language comes right after level 5-6, and the HL level of a language comes right after SL. So for instance, as a 10th grader, if you're in Spanish 3-4 right now, you could do Spanish 5-6 next year, and then you could do the standard level Spanish exam in your senior year. Um, if you're in Spanish 5-6 right now, great, you could do Spanish standard level next year, and then in senior year, go on and do Spanish higher level. Um, so that kind of gives you a sense, and that same pattern is followed in all of the languages that we offer for the IB. So for instance, with French, if you're in French 3-4 right now as a 10th grader, then you can be lined up to do French standard level as a senior. Um, if you're a little ahead in French right now and you're doing French 5-6 right now, you could do SL in junior year and then French higher level in senior year. I hope that makes sense in terms of that um, like sequencing and the way that those levels work out. There are a couple of other cases where students aren't, you know, maybe not on this. One, sometimes students haven't done any language yet. They're like, oh no, oh no, I want to do the IB diploma program, but I haven't done anything yet. Oh, what do I do? Um, IB offers a, a portion of their program called Abinicio. Abinicio is Latin for from the beginning, and it sort of means, hey, what if you get to junior year when the diploma program is supposed to start, um, and you haven't done any acquired language yet? No problem. You can do French 1 2, and then you can do French 3 4, and at the end of that French 3 4, course, you'll be prepared to take a standard level ab initio exam. So it's not, it's not like the same exam. It's not like we say, hey, well, you're fine, go take this hard one. Um, there's kind of like an intro level French exam. So even if you don't have any language background at all, um, you can do that. Um, on top of that, like even if you, like some students have taken Spanish 1, 2, or 3, 4, and they're just not into it, you can switch over to French 1, 2, and 3, 4 and use that as part of your IB diploma. Um, we also have Italian at the school. If you're in level 3-4 right now as a 10th grader, you can do 5-6 and then Italian SL. <clears throat> um, you know, I, I didn't list it here, but we also have some students who are like native Spanish speakers. Um, if you are already fluent in Spanish, if you took AP Spanish in, you know, ninth grade, um, you may be able to go straight into Spanish standard level or Spanish higher level. That's something that I would just ask you to come and talk to me about. We can discuss that um, when we set up kind of a one-on-one -on -one meeting to discuss your schedule. Um, but just know that that's an option that's out there. Um, I, I, I'm not, like, I, I don't sort of have time to highlight all the things that are there, but I like to bring up the French 1, 2, and 3, 4 courses because it, it, it's a popular option. We have a good number of students who either didn't do language in ninth and 10th grade because they were doing other electives, or maybe they did Spanish 1, 2, and just I didn't connect for them. They couldn't, couldn't follow through on what's going on. I like to point out that it's okay to start over again at French 1 and 11th grade. Um, you're still doing IB coursework. You're still being well prepared for college, um, even if it feels like you're going back and taking a freshman level course. Um, that's sort of a, a benefit that's afforded to you by the IB program. Um, one of the best parts about the class is that Mr. Bolu is the only teacher of the class. Um, he prepares you really well for IB. He teaches all of our levels of French, and so he has a good sense of what students need in order to be successful in the IB exam, and he starts that right, right from the beginning. Um, why should you take it? Uh, Mr. Bolu pointed out French is the second most learned language in the world other than English, um, and there are more connections between French and English than Spanish or most other languages. So there's a lot of connections between French and, and, and English. Um, and so I don't, int I don't, it's not my intent here to say that French is the best language that you can take, but I want to make sure that students know that doing French 1, 2, and then 3, 4 is a very, very viable option for a lot of students. Um, it, it's one of the larger language options that we have at the school for students that are pursuing the IB diploma. Um, what do students say um, in, on one of the like feedback forms that Mr. Boyu got? Um, the student pointed out that after starting in Spanish, French was really easy to switch into um, and get ready for the IB exam. So even for students that started with Spanish were like, oh my gosh, I'm so not good at language, they find that once you've made mistakes trying to learn a language once, it's easier to do it the second time around. So 
in short, don't give up. Um, you know, IB is about growth, and we're going to continue to encourage you all um, to try and grow and learn, um, you know, as we learn. Um, moving on to individuals and societies, this is kind of the social studies area. <clears throat> there's, there's two course pathways. Um, the, the main course pathway um, is the history of the Americas pathway. I would say 80%, 90% of our IB diploma candidates do this pathway. So in 11th grade, you take the course History of the Americas IBHL1. And then in 12th grade, you take the course History of the Americas IBHL2. Um, and so it sort of gives you a sense of, you know, whether you came from regular world history or AP world history, um, the History of the Americas IBHL1 course is a good course in terms of getting ready to do the History of the Americas um, higher level in the senior year. I know that some students worry that they're not doing AP US history in, in 11th grade, but I point out to students that the college credit that you're going to get from History of the Americas is going to be the exact same thing that you get from US history. The difference is that you're getting two years to develop all of that knowledge. Um, we, you know, over the past few years, we've had a lot more students taking this course than taking the AP US history course. So it's, it's sort of feeling like the AP US history is, is almost kind of like phasing out and our school is shifting toward having IB be the primary way that we learn history. So just sort of like sharing that as a perspective and something that, that we're seeing in, in our course offerings. Um, there is another option. Um, students can, instead of finishing History of the Americas, they can do economics instead. Um, both History of the Americas, IBHL2, and economics, they both meet the economics government graduation requirement. Um, so this second option is, is a valuable one to know for students that want to go into business, that want to, to sort of go into to finance, want to know more about economic policy. Um, I still recommend that students do the History of the Americas IBHL1 in 11th grade um, because some students, after doing that history course, realize, hey, I like history more than I thought I did. I'm going to continue on and finish the IB history course. Economics is one of the few courses that we offer that's a one-year IB course. And so that's why you can sort of put it after another IB course. So those are kind of the two main pathways there. Um, <clears throat> I, I did want to take a moment to highlight, again, sort of like the most well-known of the Individual Societies courses, the History of the Americas IBHL1 course. Um, the best part of the class, uh, and this is coming from Ms. DeVore, who's been teaching the class for the last couple of years, um, she feels like the best part of the course is learning to engage with history and engage with one another. Um, there's a commitment to deep thinking, to discussion, and to this concept of historical fun. Um, we'll, we'll see it in a comment later. Um, in fact, I'll jump down to it. There was a student that, that filled out on the form. There was like, the student felt like there was so much support throughout the class um, that, that the teacher made history like borderline fun, and that comes from somebody who really has hated history classes in the past. And so I think the IB perspective on history often gets us an opportunity to sort of shift the way that we think about history and what it means to study history. Um, next year, it's looking like the course will probably be taught by both Ms. DeVore and Mr. Goodwin. Um, so we're kind of looking to expand that out um, and make sure that we have more teachers, uh, great teachers, um, that, are, that are participating in IB history. Um, the, the last thing that I'll mention here is why should you take it? Um, Ms. DeVore likes to point out that the way that IB has us studying history means that we're not having to like race through a textbook to learn every bit of history. Um, you know, you leave the course enjoying history more than you did at first and with a solid understanding of what it means to study history and what it means to learn history. Um, and, and a lot of students find that it's, it's different than they thought that it was. Um, so that's a little bit of info about our History of the Americas IBHL1 class. Um, yeah, I'll mention one other thing. Th this class is intended to lead into History of the Americas IBHL2. Um, it's intended to prepare students to do higher level history. But we've started to allow students in this year, in this 11th grade year, to take the standard level history IB exam. So I just kind of wanted to mention that in terms of saying that while there's a lot of structure and organization here, there's also a lot of flexibility. And there's a lot for, for us to be able to talk about, you know, when we set up a one-on-one -on -one or when we set up a, a, a group appointment to talk about your schedule. <clears throat> Moving on to the sciences. <clears throat> um, I've probably left some things in here about biology. Um, and so I, I may, I'm going to need to edit that a little bit because our, our course choices are, are changing a little bit. Um, among our course pathways um, are one of them, we have this course Environmental Assistance and Societies, IBSL. Um, it's probably our most popular IB science option. Um, the Environmental Assistance and Societies course is a one-year course. It tends to be taken in 11th grade and you don't have to take another year after that one. Um, that one prepares you for a standard level exam. 
um, and I'll talk a little bit more about it in a moment. The, the second pathway that we have is for students that are interested in chemistry. Um, and this is particularly valuable for students that are looking at going into medicine. Um, I know that when we think about medical school, we think a lot about biology. There's a ton of chemistry there too. Um, <clears throat> so while I'm, while I'm bummed that we're not able to offer IB biology quite as much as we did before, um, AP chemistry, or not AP chemistry, but IB chemistry, um, and chemistry as a subject is, is sort of stepping in and filling some of that space. Um, so know that if you took regular chemistry or preferably honors chemistry this year in 10th grade, um, what you would presumably do is go on and do AP chemistry in 11th grade to get a deeper background in chemistry. And then in your senior year, you could go on and do either chemistry standard level or chemistry higher level, depending on what your needs are. Okay. <clears throat> um, highlighting for a moment the environmental systems course. Again, I'm, I'm just kind of trying to highlight the, the ones that I find that students take most often. Um, because I feel like it, it's, it's a good use of our time. It's a, it's a quick chunk for me to be able to share what students like about the most popular course options. And then if you want to talk about some of the other ones, again, I'm happy to set up time for us to discuss that. So in 11th grade, this course, ESS, Environmental Systems and Societies, IBSL, um, the best part of the class, um, Ms. Eckstein says that it's the labs they get to do, they have guest speakers. That looks like it says Quest speakers. I don't know if the G got cut off. But they're guest speakers, not Quest speakers. Um, environmental activities, becoming your favorite endangered animal. She does this neat activity called the Council of All Beings, where the students kind of like make a mask for them to be a, a, one of their favorite endangered animals and sort of speak up for what their role in a complex ecosystem is. Uh, Ms. Eckstein also spends a lot of energy on learning self-care skills. She builds in... Um, you know, like a little bit of meditation and, and quiet thought and, um, and just sort of like peace to the middle of busy days. Um, why should you take the class? Um, Ms. Eckstein says that climate change and environment issues affect everybody. The class teaches you how to think bo about both science and human parts of the crisis and how to address them. Um, and what do students say? <clears throat> um, students have often said that the activities are, are interesting. The class tends not to have a whole lot of homework. Um, as long as you spend your time well in class. So Ms. Eckstein tends to give a good amount of time in class to get things done. And so if students are able to stay self-motivated in class, sorry, um, they, um, they wind up having it be a sort of a manageable amount of work that's happening in the class. Um, the next category would be math, but math is probably the most complicated of them to talk about. So I'm going to skip over and talk about the arts for a little while, and then we'll come back and talk about math. Um, so within the arts, um, so the arts as a subject area for IB has a lot of subjects in it, and there are really like three of them, maybe four, that we offer here at the school. So first, dance. Dance is something that we do for IB. Um, the preferred pathway to do IB dance is that students do PE dance in 10th grade, and then dance one in 11th grade, and then either standard level or higher level dance in senior year. Um, you know, we have some students who realize later that they want to do IB. Oh, no, they didn't do PE dance or they don't have any dance experience. That's okay. You can go straight into dance one without any dance experience at all and still be able to move up and get to dance higher level or standard level. Um, I'll, I'll probably mention this in a moment, but something that Ms. Timmons, our dance teacher, likes to share a lot is dance one is intended for students that don't have any dance experience. So if you don't know anything about dance but you're open to learning, um, it's a great, great class to take. Um, I also feel obligated to say that dance is not just for girls. Um, you know, we have a number of, of male students who are um, participating in IB dance, and they're finding it to be a really, really great way for them to express themselves. Um, and it's, it's, I'll probably say it again in just a minute, but the students share that dance is still hard work, but it's a different kind of work. You know, you're not you're writing paper upon paper and reading large sections. You're practicing. You're, you're figuring out what the movement of your body means and how to do these things. <clears throat> um, if you have more dance experience than this, talk to Ms. Timmons. Talk to me. If you have more dance experience, you're probably already talking to Ms. Timmons. She's probably already talking to you about IB dance. But let us know. We're, we're happy to talk to you about how we can be flexible and what other options are there. Um, we also offer IB theater at the school. Um, it's, a new, it's a newer option for us, but it's something that we're excited to be doing. Um, whether you have any background in theater or not, our course theater production is an intro level course. So you can take theater production and then in your senior year you can do the theater arts IBSL, it's a standard level exam. <clears throat> um, if you are interested in pushing yourself a little bit more than that, you can actually go directly into theater arts IBHL1 
and then in senior year you do theater arts IBHL2 and do a higher level for theater. It's really just kind of a matter of what level of engagement you want to have as you're studying theater and as you're doing these things. Um, so yeah, th these are two of the options. Um, <clears throat> the the other one, oh, I just realized I didn't fill out the, this other page. Um, the other one that's out there is Ivy Music. Um, so our, our band director, Mr. McCann, is, is working on trying to have a consistent Ivy Music class. Um, it's not a separate class, it's something that's done sort of in parallel with the work that they do in band. Um, but for students that are in band and are interested in music and can read music, um, Ivy Music is something that we do. So if that's something that you're interested in, talk to Mr. McCann, talk to me, um, and we can discuss what that might look like in terms of fitting into your schedule. Um, Remember, I'm, I'm wanting to sort of highlight popular options. Dance is, is far and away the most popular of our arts options. Um, and so I just kind of want to point out, um, Ms. Timmons says that the best part of the class is that have, you get something of a break from regular classes. You get to explore your creativity. Um, and she really creates that space to be a safe and supportive community. Um, all the time I'm going into the dance room and I'm always impressed by how... I guess like how kind students are to one another and, and how safe the space must be for students to feel comfortable taking those kinds of risks. So even if you feel like, no, like I could never do that, if there's even an inkling of you that, that would consider that, consider it. I'm not gonna tell you to take dance, but, but consider it. it. It's a really, really neat program that we have here, and, and I wanna make sure that we're, that we're aware of it. Um, why should you take the class? Um, there's multiple ways to study dance. You can write about dance, you can create dance, you can perform dance. Um, all of those things go into this IB dance class. So even if you're not amazing at performing dance, if you can learn about dance to write it, if you can learn about dance to, to choreograph, like there are lots of different roles within dance and the course gets you the opportunity to do a lot of those things. Um, what do students say? Um, they, they share that you get to learn about dance in a different way. Um, it, it's not like students that are on dance team um, and like performing dances and really focusing on the performance aspect of it, they do dance a lot, but the IB component allows you to really learn dance and see it in a different way. Um, and so students share that that's a really great thing. All right, math. <clears throat> so I, I have to be honest, math is my subject area. I teach math, so this is my favorite to talk about. I promise I won't spend extra time on it. Um, but it is a little bit complicated because there are a couple of different pathways, and, and I want to be able to talk about what the difference is between those pathways. So here we go. Um, in math, there are two different pathways with two different focuses. <clears throat> both of the pathways cover the same five areas. Both of them cover numbers and algebra. They both cover functions. They both cover geometry and trigonometry. They both cover probability and statistics. They both cover calculus. Um, now, right in the middle of that sentence, in the middle of all of that, I might say, you know, our school offers AP Calculus, right? In AP Calculus, you're going to learn a lot of calculus, and that's it. Like, the course is just going to be calculus, and that's not a bad thing, but as a person who loves math, I know that there's more to math than just calculus. And so one of the things that I love about our IB Math offerings is that all of them cover all of these things. You're not taking calculus you know, at the cost of not learning any statistics. You're not taking AP statistics at the cost of learning all calculus. Um, you know, there's space for you to learn all of these things, okay? <clears throat> um, we, we offer both of these pathways, and sorry, some of these slides are out of date. Um, the first pathway in, in this, these two branching pathways, the first one is called Math Analysis and Approaches. Um, we offer it at both standard level and higher level. The course focuses more on proving or showing why math is true and learning approaches to problem solving. That's why it's called analysis and approaches. You're like deeply analyzing math and proving and showing why it's true, or you're finding out how to approach problem solving. Um, it's my favorite pathway, but I'm weird. I was like a pure math major, and so I just love thinking about problems. I don't like actually using math for anything. I just like to have fun with it. Um, the pathway is generally a better match for students that want to study math or physics or like really super deep science stuff. Like math analysis and approaches is probably a better fit for you. You are going to study more calculus than you do in the other pathway. You study a little bit less statistics, but the real big difference is that you are learning about proof methods. Um, you know, you're learning about what it means, sorry, <laughs> to approach strange problems. The other pathway, which is also available at higher level and standard level, again, want to point out this is a, a typo here. We offer this one at both higher level and standard level, and this one also at higher level and standard level. The math application interpretation focuses more on how we apply math 
how we interpret math, and how that gets used in the real world. Um, and I want to be very clear, this other one is not easier than this one. Like They're both challenging in their own way. Um, but the A and I pathway is generally a better match for students that want to study science, who want to study social science, um, students who don't want to go into STEM fields. Um, although it's actually interesting, the STEM fields also require a lot of ability to do data interpretation. Um, and so there's, there's really value in both of these pathways for all students. <clears throat> um, I will say that in the top one, I feel like you need to enjoy math for math's sake for this one. Whereas this one, some of your motivation for the course comes from the fact that, hey, we are learning how to apply math. We are learning how to, to think about data um, and some of those other things. Um, so just kind of a thing to keep in mind. So now pathways. Um, first, I'm going to talk about the A and I pathway. So A and I is the second one, application and interpretation. So I'm going to talk about those A and I pathways first. So if you're interested in doing higher level math application and interpretation, there's kind of two ways that happens. As a sophomore, you need to either be taking Math a and IBSL1, or Integrated Math 3. Okay? If you're in either of those right now, when you're doing pretty well, then in 11th grade you'd go on and take Math a and I, IBSL. That's kind of like the standard level version of that. And then in your senior year, you take your second year of it, where you go on and do Math a and I, IBHL2. So if higher level Math a and I is something that you're interested in, this is sort of the, the, the schedule outlay that you'd be looking for. <clears throat> On the other hand, if you like the idea of applying math and interpreting math and thinking about what, it, what, it, like, what, what we do with that and how we use it, um, the standard level pathway, it's okay if you're in Integrated Math 2 right now. After Integrated Math 2, you go on to Math A and A, IBSL 1. I know that says A and A right there. This course is actually intended to prepare for both pathways, so that, that's why it's there. And then in senior year, you would take the math A&I IBSL, so that's what that pathway looks like. Um, you can also, if you're ahead right now, if you're in IBSL1 or if you're in IM3, you can take the A&I SL in your junior year, test junior year, and then take the higher level course, but maybe not take the exam. Like, that's, that's also a possibility. So I just kind of wanted to share that those things are out there. So now we're shifting over and talking about the A and A pathway. So remember, A and A was the, the first one that I talked about over here. A and A is analysis and approaches, standard level and higher level, the one that focuses more on proof. <clears throat> um, for these ones, if you want to do higher level, you, you need to be doing either, you know, IBSL1 or Integrated Math 3 right now as a 10th grader. You would take Math A and A, IBHL1, that's, you know, higher level part one. And then senior year, you would go on and do Math A and A, IBHL2, okay? So that's the pathway that we use to get to higher level math A and A, okay? For math A, another typo, I'm sorry. This should say math analysis and approaches SL. Um, hopefully I have them, okay, good, I have them correct here. Um, if you're in integrated math two right now, that's fine. You would do A and A, IBSL1 in 11th grade, and then in 12th grade you take math A and A, IBHL1. I know this is a little bit confusing. The course name has an HL in it, but because it's HL1, that means that that's kind of equivalent with SL. The way that IB sets things up is that HL1 tends to be on par with the standard level of that. So that's why it says HL even though you're testing SL. Okay. <clears throat> I keep looking at the clock because the bell is going to ring in a few minutes and I'd rather not have a bell in the video. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try. We're going to see what we can do here. <clears throat> um, IB Diploma Candidate Program Requirements. So I just finished talking about all of the different IB subjects that we offer. Students are free to take as many of those as they want. You can take one, you can take two, you can take three, you can take you can take whatever you want. Um, you do not have to do all of them. However, there is a program called the IB Diploma Program. Students can earn an internationally recognized IB Diploma um, by completing the program. In order to do this, students take three higher level exams and three standard level exams in those six areas. So. You might do English as a higher level. You might do Spanish as a higher level. You might do dance as a higher level. And then do history as a standard level, and ESS as a standard level, and math as a standard, just as a, as a random example, okay? So to be an IB Diploma candidate, you're taking six of those exams, three higher level and three standard level. <clears throat> um, you complete a course called the Theory of Knowledge and another one called the Diploma Course Seminar in 11th and 12th grade. So you'll take a course, the Diploma Course Seminar in 11th grade, and then, of course, the theory of knowledge in 12th grade. Both of those courses are designed to not really have much homework, but they are a weighted 
grade where we focus a lot on discussion and on what it means to be a learner in the current world. Um, we also use those courses as a place to support you in writing a research paper, which is another one of the re requirements of the IB Diploma Program. And finally, to complete a CAS plan. CAS stands for Creativity, Activity, and Service. And it's really not a hard thing. We just encourage students, and okay, I guess require them, um, to, on a monthly basis, do things that are creative, do things that are physically active, do things that are service. Basically, be a well-rounded and good person um, who's trying to do the best that they can for the world around them. Um, there's a lot more to say about the IB Diploma Program, but this is it in a nutshell. So we, we understand now what the philosophy of the program is. We understand what the courses individually are, and now we sort of see what the requirements are for the entire program. So for students that complete all of this, you get that internationally recognized diploma, and you are you know, an IB Diploma candidate and an IB Diploma recipient. Um, the bell just rang, and it's perfect timing. That's all that I had to say. Um, I can easily talk for hours more about this, so if you've got questions, I'm happy to talk to you about it. I can also not talk for hours. I can talk for 10 minutes or I can email you. So if you have any questions, please feel free. Um, you know, send me an email. Find me in my office. My office is right next to the Counseling Center. Um, it's easy to find because on the door you'll find uh, you know, the, the learner profile all in, in rainbow stickers. Um, so I would love to talk to you um, either about the whole IB Diploma Program or about just taking individual classes. So thanks so much for spending an hour of your time with me today learning about our IB program. Um, I look forward to getting to talk to you soon um, and, and talk about setting up a schedule for you. That really is kind of the next step in this is to talk about, hey, what do you want to do in 11th grade and 12th grade? Or maybe you're watching this earlier in 9th grade now and you want to know 10th, 11th, and 12th. Um, I'm happy to sit down and sort of set up an individualized plan with you, um, whether that's for the full IB diploma or just for some IB classes. Um, so once again, thanks for spending the time with me. Um, and please, please, please let me know if you have any questions. Have a good one.